Okay, let's talk RNG. RNG, for those that don't know it, is random number generation or random number generator. When people are feeling like the computer game is out to get them, they'll say that the RNG is out to get them. Most of you probably know this, but I'll just quickly go over it. Computer generated random number numbers aren't actually random. What they actually are is a number that's pulled off of a list, a, a really long list of floats between zero and one that are then manipulated to get at whatever number that you want. And I think a lot of you have maybe taken the wrong lesson away from this knowledge that they're not truly random. And you think that, oh, well, therefore they are definitely skewed and they're definitely out to get me. In most cases, that's not the case at all. What it means is that you have this list and then you have something that's called a seed. And a seed is basically start at this place in the list and go forward from there. Which means if you put the same seed into the same computer, because it has to have the same actual list, then you will get the same numbers back out, which can, in some cases, for some games, give you a certain degree of determinism, where you can essentially rewind time and go and regenerate those random number numbers again and get the same numbers back out again. The reality is, is that the pseudo random numbers are more than random enough for almost all applications. There are some extreme cases with regards to internet security and the like where they're not good enough and they do all kinds of crazy things. There's a building filled with lava lamps that are used to generate true random numbers when the pseudo random number aren't good enough. But for our purposes, for computer game purposes, that's more than good enough. But how do you check that your random numbers are actually good enough? This is an entire field of study within statistical analysis, but let me just give you the sort of top level. So the first thing you do is just sort of generate a ton of random numbers in your range and make sure that they're pretty evenly distributed across that range. If you're generating, if you're rolling D20s, roll 50,000 D20s and make sure that you're getting an even distribution from one to 20. But that's actually not good enough because I could just make a list that's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, and then just repeat over and over again. That's gonna have perfect distribution between one and 20, but that's not random at all, is it? So what you then need to do is you need to start doing higher order checks. So you can check the pairs. So I'll roll two numbers and there's there are 400 different pairs for two D20s. There are 400 different pairs if you roll two D20s. You can roll a one and a one, a one and a five, all over the place, up to a 20 and a 20. Roll millions of those and make sure that the distribution of those 400 pairs is evenly distributed. And then do that again for triplets. And you can keep going up forever, um, probably for most purposes, if, if, your, if your numbers look evenly distributed at the pairs, you're probably fine. Most games aren't doing this because the, the random number generator that's built in is fine. You're not checking to make sure it's actually random enough, but that's how you can go ahead and, and start to check it. But the reason why we're doing this video isn't to explain how RNG works, it's to talk about cases when it's actually not used, when random numbers are considered the wrong way to go. Someone in the community sent me this awesome video from Sid Meier where he talks about player expectations, the psychology of players, and how that if there are three to one odds, players expect to win 100% of the time, even though three to one odds, you'd expect to win 75% of the time. And so in the game example he's using, they have done incredibly uh, aggressive manipulation of the RNG to mean that if you have three to one odds in your favor, you always win. But if you have the opposite, where you have three to one odds against you, you don't always lose. And to, and to do further things about avoiding cases where maybe you have two to one odds and then you lose and then on the second battle they make sure you win because again player expectation is that they wouldn't lose two games like that back to back even though the probability of that is 
really about one in nine, so about 11%. That's the most aggressive and, and spectacularly so aggressive manipulation of probability that I've ever seen done and admitted to in the actual gameplay of a game. In most cases, in my experience, that's not really done. But then again, most games don't actually present the probabilities exactly in the moment as to what's going on. So it's harder for the player to know what's going on and do the math wrong because they don't have the math available. And this is the reality is our monkey lizard brains are looking for simple patterns. And when the math gets complicated, our brains don't get what's going on. If something is unlikely, we can kind of accept that, okay, it happened. If two things are unlikely and they happen back to back, that feels incredibly unlikely, almost impossible. That's where this manipulation in the case of the Civ game that Sid Meier is talking about comes in. The other place that you do see it consistently fudged is any place where the player is spending money. So Hearthstone, guarantees that if you buy 50 packs, you will get a legendary. That sort of implies that the probability, I haven't actually looked up the probability, but it prob basically implies that the probability of getting a legendary is probably around 2%. But the chances of you buying 50 packs in a row and not getting a legendary are certainly not zero. But what Hearthstone does is basically says, you're spending money on this, so we're gonna guarantee that you get a legendary every 50 packs, um, which actually increases the probability of getting a legendary a little bit because it kind of cuts the tail off of that math. Mass Effect 3 with its packs does something similar. It guarantees a good drop every so many packs. I don't remember. I think it actually accumulates your probability of getting a good pack until it's 100%, something like that. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's money involved. So even though it is perfectly rational, if you have lots of players, we just did a video about sufficiently large sample sizes making anything possible. I'll put it up here. That's great in aggregate. It's great that, of course, somebody's going to buy 200 Hearthstone packs and not get a legendary if there are millions of people playing, but that doesn't help that one person that did that, does it? So you put in these fudges that uh, that help level the playing field and cut off the extreme outer edge of your bell curve. You only really cut off the one end. You're not doing anything to the other guy who got six legendaries in a row. You're just like, yeah, that's great, that good, good for you. But you make sure that that you don't have people that are never getting a legendary because their luck is just so bad. Random numbers, not actually random in computer games. You can check your random numbers by, uh, by, by checking the distribution and checking up the pairs and maybe the triplets. Probably don't need to go any further than that. Player expectation doesn't match reality. And sometimes you need to take that into account and adjust your math to reflect how our primitive meat brains work as opposed to how the math actually works. And in the case of money being thrown around, you probably want to have something in there to make sure that people are not getting a raw deal. Because when there's money going around, they're much more likely to get really angry at you, talk about you loudly on the internet, or maybe even get lawyers involved, which is probably a case you would win, but it's not a case you want to have. So we've got shirts available. This shirt is file it all and let triage sort it out. I think YouTube thinks it says file it ass because it will not let me put this shirt on the actual shelf below the video, but there's a shelf below the video if you want to check out some of the merchandise. If you click on that, you'll be able to find this shirt. It just won't be in the shelf itself. Special thanks as always to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. Our RNG is out to get you. Are games inherently unfair? Let's talk about it down in the comments. Have you seen anything that is a replacement for RNGs in games that inherently need randomness? Um, I have some thoughts about ways to tweak randomness. Um, I've played some games that used cards instead of dice. And uh, even though there's some randomness inherent in that, it does provide an interesting extra strategy element. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a future video. 
I will see you again soon. Thank you.